What's the worst place you have laughed uncontrollably? Story one. I will never live down the shame. My old roommate and I were hanging out when he told me his dad got some bad news from the doctor. I was preparing for the worst when he started talking about it. He looked me in the eyes and told me he has a little cancer and I just freaking lost it. I busted out and laughed at his face for a solid three and a half minutes. That was me laughing at the fact that I was laughing. I was mortified. He took it like a champ though, and we were still buds. The second I'm pretty fond of, my nephew was being baptized and I was going to show up. A family knows I'm atheist, but I'm still showing up because it's important to his mom. Anyway, they tell me it's at 10, when in reality baptism was at 12 and 5. The service was at 10. Fine, I can appreciate someone telling a crowd of people known to be a butthole. Sermons are usually just good messages. So I'll hang out. I'm half listening when the third pastor comes out for her sermon. A very new age church with a coffee shop, playground, lots of money. While she's wrapping up, she does the whole spiritual riffing thing, where they improvise a closing prayer. Everyone has their heads down. One while, she speaks, and I'm just passively listening until she says one thing that shakes me out of my own head. Thank you for looking down on us today, Jesus. We kneel before your grace with open arms. Come down upon us, Jesus. Come down. Then his crap you not, the next thing that she says is this. Come on us, Jesus. Come on all of us in your glory. I laughed so hard. I cried. I didn't expect it at all, and I was floored. My family looked devastated, as if Jesus had actually came all over the audience. My brother sitting next to me couldn't handle it and laughed at me laughing. To the pastor's credit, she didn't skip a beat. Finished up and didn't even acknowledge the freaking he either in the middle row. Anyway, I'm glad I could share those stories. Yes, I feel awful about the first one. Story 2. Here's a word of advice. Don't attend car crashes to the first date. Back when I was first trying my hand at online dating, I made plans to meet up with a young woman at a coffee shop near a beach. Like many such doomed from the start affairs, this one began with a lot of small talk, a discussion about the surrounding area, and a couple of allegedly humor misunderstandings. For a little while, it seemed like it was going to be an unremarkable excursion, but just as the conversation was actually getting started, we were interrupted by the loud screech, pop, and crunch of a fish-tailing car plowing into a nearby tree. As wont to happen in such circumstances, many of the cafe's other customers gathered around to gawk at the scene. Murmurs have regulation rippled through the small crowd as we'll watch the cars drive a climb out and survey the damage. Followed by gas of shock and alarming people noticed that her head was beating. One of the nearby employees went to call 911 and my date asks if we should try to help the woman. I was about to respond with my agreement, but the word never came out, largely because they were replaced by a glorious laughter. Please understand, I wasn't making light of the car crash. In fact, at the exact moment that I'd been encouraged to assist, I'd caught sight of something that my brain decided was too funny to ignore from behind the wreckage. There came an enormous, almost spherical man riding on a motorized bicycle. He looked to be about 50, had an expression of intense concentration on his face, and was moving so slowly that it really seemed likely should have toppled over. Each of the man's limbs were frozen in place, statue-like, as the dull whine of the vehicle's motor struggled to engine forward. I don't know why I found that so amusing, but I couldn't stop myself from laughing. Tears of mirth clouded my vision, and no matter how hard I tried to restrain myself, I just couldn't stymie my amused output. Needless to say, it didn't make the best impression on the girl across the table from me, and I could feel the disapproving stares of the other patrons from all around. I did finally manage to explain what had caused me to break down like I had, but I'm not convinced that the young woman believed me. We didn't have a second date. But to be honest, I still chuckle to myself when I picture the man on his moped. My first date with a girl was a literal car wreck, but it also gave me my funniest memory. Story 3 when I first met my husband's parents, they invited some of their extended family out for dinner. My husband's aunt told me this story. An elderly mandate new was island hopping in Indonesia and got into a small plane of about 10 people. The plane's engine failed or something like that, and it nosedived into the ocean. Nine passengers passed away. This mandate new was the only survivor and was picked up by a passing boat. He went into the hospital where they were sure he was on his teeth with pneumonia after a month of being in hospital in a foreign country. 
His family demanded he be transported back home. After another month in hospital, finally he made a recovery and returned home. For his first breakfast back home, he asked that he'd be served on his balcony. He sat down on his chair on the balcony and waited for his breakfast to be served. The balcony fell off the house and he passed away. I think it was the phrasing, fell off the house, combined with nerves at meeting my husband's family for the first time, that made me completely lose my mind. I was wiping away tears. The worst part is that no one else heard the story, and when they asked the aunt what was so funny, she said I was just telling her how so-and-so passed away. Whoops. Story 4. At my mother's baptism, my mother was raised Catholic, but grew away from the church for their various reasons over the years, but she became very active at a local Baptist church and decided to officially convert. They held a huge ceremony during the Sunday morning service, and the whole family showed up to support her. Well, there's always music and singing, and being a fairly large church, they had a band with a multitude of instruments. There was this one freaking guy, and his job was to play the chimes. You know, the different ones hanging on strings all in a row. Well, let me tell you, this guy loved to play the freaking chimes. It was his only job he did it with such flourish. He would shove his hand into the air before swooping into the hanging bars of the metal. Did you know that he was also able to incorporate chimes into multiple points of all the songs played? Well, he did. Chimneys all day. The first time it happened, my husband did iron oxide in the pew. That was it. We freaking lost it, and he kept doing it. Song after song, we could not get control of ourselves. My father sitting behind us was furious. Story 5. Walmart. There were two stores in the back bathroom. I had to take a huge crap and ran in. Before I could comfort to let it all loose, another guy runs in and takes the stall next to mine. So we're both trying to be quiet, pooping, when the next guy next to me finally whispers new onto himself before letting out a little squeak of flatulence, which made me giggle really hard and made it difficult with a flatulence pop. It was quiet for like 1.5 seconds, and then both me and the guy in the next stall started laughing and can't ultimately while crappy and letting the most unascribable sounds leave our butts for what must have been a good minute or two, after it was there was awkward silence of paper being torn and applied gently, and then we realized we were both done. But neither of us actually wanted to meet. So he just says, you first. So I left the stall, washed my hands, and as I left the bathroom, I heard his stall open. I never looked back, but I think about it often. A guy and I pooped while laughing in a bathroom at the same time. Story 6. Oh man, I used to work in a call center, and on each call I had to inquire whether the customer had cavity wall and loft insulation already. On one call, I accidentally asked someone if they'd had their craft and loftity waft, immediately bursting into an insane fit of giggles. Thankfully, the person on the other end of the phone saw the funny side. Honestly, just typing that up, now I'm having to press the giggles. I ended the call and had to take a break to let out all the giggles and compose myself. Eventually, I calmed down enough to make another phone call, and for whatever reason, as soon as the next person answered the phone, I burst back into giggles. The customer was new I had impressed, I explained caft and lavity waft, and apologized to the guy. But he told me how unprofessional it was, and that it made my company look bad, etc., etc. I apologized profusely, but still couldn't really stop giggling. He hung up shortly after that, and to be honest, freaked that guy because Captain Lavity Waft is hilarious. Story 7. Every year on Christmas Eve, my friend's grandparents read the story of Jesus, and just the fact that we should respectfully remain quiet and listen makes us get the giggles every year. Mind you, I'm 21. Last year, many people pasted, so it was an emotional time. Well, we got the giggles during the reading and couldn't stop. About three of us got the giggles and couldn't stop. I tell you, the giggles make you weak. During our efforts to stop, my mistake of a brother stretched out his leg to help inch off the thought that was about to impede during the dead silence. Unfortunately, it only helped to turn that silent fart into a high-pitched two-minute screech that quickly overpowered the room. The highly religious grandparent were not impressed with our display, and my mom quickly dragged my still-farting brother out into the other room and beat him while still farting, and while still laughing. Best thought of Jesus ever. Story 8. Not the worst, but I've done it at the movies a few times. Once during Mad Max, Fury Road, and again watching the first Jurassic World. One friend insisted in seeing them in 3D, 
For some reason, when the Get Player and Mad Maximum came flying off the truck in 3D, lost my crap and could not pull myself together, and I have a pretty loud belly laugh cackle. I unintentionally made a scene in the theater, same deal with Jurassic World, when the guy who is talking about weaponizing the velociraptors tries to hold out a hand to calm one down, and it starts by eating his arm, then killing him, the 3D in that movie was met, and this one was one of the few times it kind of worked. And again, for some reason, I lost my mind laughing. We don't go to 3D movies anymore. Story 9. Went to a friend's church when I was 20, and at one part of the service, people started standing up sharing their struggles. Lots of tears, really somber mood. Lady in front of me stands up, and she's ugly crying, snorting, sniffling, voice cracking, and squeaking. And it's frick me as funny. I started giggling, so I bent over in the pew to make it look like I was crying. My redneck friend sitting beside me started patting my back and rubbing my shoulders comfortably, which made that even funnier, and I started belly laughing. But all bent over, covering my face, it looked like I was absolutely falling apart and trying to hold it in. I started to make my own weird gossiping, snorting, and my friend revenue until years later when I was telling the story at a party. Story 10. I actually felt absolutely tear trouble for this, but I was at Game 6 of last year's playoffs between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins, and they announced they would holding a moment of silence for the victims of the Toronto van attack. I went with my buddies from work, and we had been drinking all day. Buddy wasn't listening to the announcement, and right after it ended, he yells, Lukic gets freaks. The combination of his bizarre inflection... The following complete silence afterwards, and the fact that Milan Lukic, who he was referring to, hasn't played for the Bruins in years, made my wasted butt cry laughing. I tried to stifle it, but didn't do a good enough job. And after the silence, a couple behind us were loudly exclaiming how unbelievably rude the two guys laughing were. I can't blame them all. Story 11. My friend and I were talking about music from when we were in middle school and high school, and as we came back to the office from lunch, I mentioned how, while I was relaxing the night before, my system of a down came on my Spotify, and we started laughing about how ridiculous and amazing soda was. My friend then makes a perfect impression of the, why do they always send the poor, scream. At this point, we just walked past the receptionist and into the quiet parts of the office, and I start laughing uncontrollably. You know those times when you try and be quiet while laughing, but you can't, and you just end up being just as loud? That was me at the time. The people staring at me were not happy. Story 12. In 10th grade history class, we watched Schindler's List. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's freaking miserable. So there's this one scene where Schindler and Stern figure out a way to get a whole train full of Jewish prisoners released so they can work in Schindler's factory. Except there's a god dang paperwork error, and instead of being saved, the train starts heading to freaking Auschwitz instead. Literally the worst place it could possibly go. It was just an over-the-top plot point. Even if it's completely true, it's just so insane that I started busting out laughing in the middle of the classroom while some other kids were crying. It was a really bad look. Story 13. Funeral for ex-husband's grandma. My son was only six years old and hadn't pooped in a few days. My ex-husband was holding him. Standing beside me as the priest was doing the eulogy, my son finally released his several days' worth of poop which was significant enough that we referred to it as Poonami. It wasn't super loud, but I could hear it standing right there, and it went on for quite a while. My ex and I looked to each other and started silently laughing so hard, trying to hold it in. Later, people came up to us to express their condolences, then thinking we had been sobbing, not laughing. Story 14. In a staff meeting, when they told us the store was closing, we would all be losing our jobs. It was the first mandatory staff meeting in the two years I had been there, and usually the warehouse area where I worked would do those things separately. I was joking with the couple at work that we were all getting laid off in one go to save time. And when we got there, the big boss has tissue boxes lining the meeting table. I knew I was right and immediately started giggling like an idiot. I kept it together, kinda, until they announced the layoffs, and then I lost it. Other people were in tears for losing their jobs but the whole thing was weirdly hilarious to me. Story 15. Mad impact panel. An old lady fell asleep and not incredibly loud parents were telling the group about how their daughter was ended by a wasted driver. Everyone in the room was losing it. Quietly, and the parents kept stopping mid-sentence to try to collect themselves. I felt pretty bad. While getting a ticket from a cop, 
He was a real jerk and took his job way too seriously. Honestly, I don't know what came over me, but I couldn't help it. But start busting up laughing at him. Hint, don't do this. He yelled at me more. P.S. I also had my daughter's car, and somehow it makes it doubly worse. Story 16. Back of an 8th grade classroom during a presentation. I'm bullcrapping with my friend because I'm kind of a pig. Meanwhile, our student presenter has a small but noticeable speech impediment. Every couple of words, he has to pause and catch his breath mid-word. Thank you. While not paying attention to the presentation, my friend made me laugh, which happened to coincide perfectly with one of the pauses. I immediately felt an entire classroom of eyes on me as I tried to look in and pointed at my friend as the object of laughter, but it was too late. No way to talk yourself out of that mess. Story 17. My dad's funeral had started with the honor guard got lost between the funeral home and cemetery, and we saw them turn into the cemetery on two wheels right before the hearse got there. It grew when the shells from the 21-gun salute fell out of the flag when they handed it to my mom. Then we got stranded in the cemetery because the limo wouldn't start after the service, and almost everyone else was gone. We spent 10 to 15 minutes just laughing in the cemetery. We all figured that dad couldn't have planned it better. Story 18 my grandmother's funeral. I was sitting next to my six-year-old nephew, and he turned to me with his middle finger up while asking, do you know what this means? I was like, my little dude, when did you even learn that? And he told me that he saw his friend's brother do it, and he wanted to know what it meant. I'm the worst aunt for saying that it's showing where grandma's going, which is up to heaven. This darn child got up on a chair with two of his middle fingers up and dramatically said she was the best grandma. Story 19. My mom had set her face on fire when I was in high school. While in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, I was sitting in the front seat and looked at the dash and noticed there was a knob for the siren. I saw two labels. One was wail, the other yelp. I asked the driver if the third was shriek. This, along with several other inappropriate quips, gave me some really strange looks. But considering it was like 4 a.m. when it all went down, and there wasn't an adult around, I was just trying to hold it together. Story 20. Not me, but I caused it. We had a teacher in the 10th grade who was gone for a bit, and upon her return, was explaining to the class that her father had passed away, and that's why she took time off. I wasn't paying attention to what she was saying, and either was my friend across the room when I made a stupid face at him. He burst out laughing, literally as she said her father had passed away. He couldn't even get words out. To explain what had happened when the entire class was staring at him, including a disgusting look from the teacher... Story 21. I was visiting family in Zimbabwe. A street peddler was trying to sell us goods as we walked to Vic Falls. Suddenly, a small truck stopped and out popped a man in camo shouting and pointing an assault rifle in our direction. I thought it was directly at me, but it was at the man next to me. My response was uncontrollable laughter from stress. My cousin was not amused as this was the way he was in this country. I was also not amused. This, I never explained why I burst out laughing. Story 22. On the set of the show Seal Team during a take, I'm a background actor, so I'm on lots of shows, either just sitting there or walking back and forth in the distance. I'm also a huge BoJack Horseman fan, so I think David Baranez is a hilarious guy. I start laughing a little whenever a commercial of his comes on, so when I was supposed to be sitting there eating a fake meal during the day, he's having dialogue right behind me with all the cameras rolling, and I just could not keep it together. Story 23. Me and a friend were at a Donna store, German slash Turkish food, and behind us at some annoying little boys, maybe 12, they were acting like some sort of gangster, talked really loudly, and annoyed the crap out of everybody. One of them said very loudly, oh man, do I love Aryan and some Turkish drink. My friend turned around, looked him straight in the eye, and said, I love you. I completely lost my crap. Couldn't even order anymore. Story 24. Sixth grade at the Holocaust Museum, the teachers made the biggest deal about none of us laughing or screwing around, so by the magic of reverse psychology, everybody was just keyed up and ready to go as we were walking around looking at the exhibits. My friend, Rip, leans over and says, Bill Kai, the Nazi spy, and everybody just loses their crap. The teachers were so mad, but they brought it on themselves by making such a big deal about it. Story 25 when I worked retail, I used to giggle maniacally from stress whenever a customer would get upset with me, which luckily didn't happen often, but it was never well received. 
An older wasted man once told me he was going to make me stop giggling with force if necessary, and for some reason I replied, that's art, which just enraged him even more. Eventually another customer helped get him out of the store, and I was so grateful I gave him a thank you BJ. Story 26. My significant other and I were out to brunch at Macaroni Grill. They said, well, you can drink mimosas, which is always a great time. We got a nice buzz going, and they have the tables covered in paper, so they bring crayons to draw with. I started labeling everything, but was abbreviating everything. Olive oil, O juice, water, H2O, balsamic vinegar, Bivin. I lost it. I don't know why, but the word even got to me and I couldn't stop laughing. The way came by and immediately left. Story 27. I'm a medic. During a cardiac arrest, we are in the back of the truck working the guy, and the ambulance suddenly fills with a terrible smell. My partner says, I think the patient just voided his bowels. Wow, that's awful. Me? No, I just farted. We both started laughing horribly, and the guy driving the rig for us, a firefighter from one of the local departments, had no idea what was going on. We kept doing our job, but I'm glad no family was around for it. Story 28. Last year, I was at my grandma's great-grandma's funeral. I was very, very close to her growing up all my life. She passed away at the ripe age of 97. My good friend came to the funeral, and he sat off somewhere else since I had to sit in the front row and he kept on texting me inside jokes and just funny stuff in general, and it kept me laughing through all my tears. I was very sad, but happy at the same time. I'm glad he was there. Story 29. Church. When the topic of sleeping together, the pastor was super passionate and yelling, annual sleeping together is a sin, homosexuality is a sin, and don't get me started on relations with your mother. I don't go to that church anymore for a variety of reasons, but mile out giggling and cackle snort got a lot of people riled up. Some church pastors are extremely entertaining when bust out alcohol. I have problems, but don't knock until you try it. Story 30. I was interviewing a woman for a part-time job in our office when I realized that if you dipped her in blue paint, she would be the spitting image of Nanny's mirth. I started to crack up and realized I was going to lose it in front of her, so I told her I was having an allergy attack. I ran to the bathroom and laughed my head off went back and finished the interview. Story 31. My grandma's funeral. She was wearing a brooch that was given to her on a previous birthday. We played a joke on her before she was given the brooch, and her reaction was hilarious. I walked up and looked at her, saw the brooch, and just started laughing. I got yelled at a bunch. Once I explained, everyone laughed a little also. Story 32. In a haunted horror maze, the owners and actors clearly put a lot of time and effort into making it look at it feel incredible. But on the first jump scammer, adrenaline spiked and I couldn't control the constant laughter. That followed me to the way, absolutely shattered the tension for everyone. Story 33. Several years ago, working in a law firm had a case where a gay couple with a civil unions from another state was splitting up. New York didn't recognize the union, one party wanted to be an equity court rather than law, meeting with my boss about it, and he drops the phrase, backdoor into equity. Story 34. National Healthcare Conference Award. Ceremony was in a huge banquet hall, and there was an open wine bar to lady, and I got a little sloshed and started playing nine ever at our table. Very inappropriate giggling pursued. For the next star... Surrounded by hospital executives, was also an intern at the time trying to get a permanent job. Kind of stupid. Story 35. Was getting into the hearse on the way to my grandma's funeral. My sister had pulled out her phone, opened Pokemon Go, and was in the process of catching a Charizard next to the hearse driver's door. She noticed me staring, looked me dead in the eye, and solemnly say, Gotta catch them all. Story 36. When I was in fifth grade, the police officers of my town came to the school to give us a talk about road safety. They suddenly showed us an image of a person dodging a train, and I started laughing. While the rest of the class was in silence, the teacher decided to kick me out of the class and made me wait in the corridor. Story 37. Poetry class, senior year of college. Easy, am I right? Professor wanted to show us that strings of words can flow like notes in a symphony. So he had us listen to Mozart's Requiem and appreciate the sounds. The top comment said, this is what I listen to when I take a dump. I laughed so hard that he told me to get the freak out of his class. Story 38. Yesterday during yoga, one of the girls that I invited fell asleep in the first sitting pose. 
We were standing there doing sun salutations, and she's still sitting there on a sleep path. I busted out laughing and couldn't stop. Story 39. I was getting into a notoriously happy elevator with my uncle when the door slammed on his shoulders really hard and made him run in shock. I couldn't stop myself from laughing at him and felt awful about it, especially when I found out later that it really hurt and that my laughter had made him feel bad. Story 40. At a wedding, while the vows were being spoken, because some dudes sitting in the pew in front of me farted and no one else seemed to hear or acknowledge it. Kept for me, I couldn't stop laughing, and the plus one was with me kept sobering me to get me to stop making me laugh even more, because she didn't know what I was laughing at. Story 41. Well, it wasn't uncontrollable, but there were a lot of laughs at my mom's funeral. My grandmother, who was 96 at the time and having a bit of dementia, said out loud, Oh, you shut your mouth, when the priest started his prayers. It actually lightened up a grim room. Story 42. This one time at a funeral, my cousins and I saw an older gentleman approach the casket. It was a rope and casket, and he started talking. No big deal. But what he said sent us. It was something like, Hey Jude, I'd ask how you're doing, but you're not alive. Story 43. My boss gave a talk to a squad of disabled athletes in wheelchairs, and not only did he say that, it's important to put your best foot forward, but he also said, A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I had to leave the room. Story 44. They started playing the Hallelujah song at school. My friend asked, Isn't this the song from Shrek? Story 45. Fred's sister came in and a serious tone, said Disco is dead, which made me chuckle. Then she told me Disco was a person. I didn't know this. I hit that awkward hysterical laughter and had to leave. My friend forgave me. His sister, understandably, not so much. Story 46. At passport control in Canada, the guy was busting my butt for spending a lot of time in the Middle East, and I was like, you're one to talk to Officer Abbas, and he was not amused. But then we started talking about throwing stones at skippers, and he was happy. Story 47. At my son's funeral, my daughter, 10 at the time, got her hair caught in my niece's earring while my daughter was resting her head on her cousin's shoulder. It was a nice five-minute laughing session by the three of us, but people behind us thought we were crying. Story 48. My wedding vows. Husband got through his, then hit a giggle loop and had me struggling to get through mine to the point where I was a little late on a few responses, and my dad asked my mom, is she crying? No, no, she's laughing. Story 49. When the small turbo prop plane hit really bad turbulence and dropped a bid. Later screamed, children cried, I was laughing hysterically. Wife was unimpressed, which of course made the laughing worse. 10 out of 10. Story 50. At my roommate's father's funeral, extremely pressing, because his father took his own life. However, there was an old guy in attendance who let out the slowest, clappiest fart of all time. I couldn't help myself. Story 51. Heathrow Airport, sometimes in the 90s, there was a one-minute silence for Princess Diana. My girlfriend burst into uncomfortable laughter. It was so infectious that I ended up in fits of laughter as well. I still feel bad. Story 52. Next to an unalive body, elderly lady had fallen out of bed, lit a cigarette, and promptly passed away. She had such a mad-off look on her face, like, great, fill out of bed, can't get up, and watch this, a heart attack. Well, why the frick not? Story 53. The toilet standing while taking a pee, remembering something hilarious. Pee-pee everywhere. Story 54. After receiving my final test of the year, and all seemed like some freaking exorcism. Story 55. In an elevator full of people, it was my first time being naked in public. Story 56. Ad for helping people with Down syndrome. That was playfully before a movie. Story 57. Orchestra where Bernie Sanders' doppelganger was playing a cello solo. Story 58. Information while in boot camp. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.